Today we look at the planning capabilities of SAP Analytics Cloud. The planning capabilities are an important piece. SAP Analytics Cloud is one of the single products in the market that allows for insights using business intelligence techniques, predictive analytics using PA techniques, but also it embeds a full planning module. On the screen, you see an overview of a planning module for a company. And on the top left hand side, you see my key metrics like the gross profit. I can drill down in there by clicking and it gives me more details. I've compared my actuals and my forecast. On the right hand side, you see uh, operating income per site. So I can hoover and it gives me the metadata back. I also have on the middle of the screen a time range filter where I can just drag and drop the slider. And you will see that my <clears throat> metrics are adjusted accordingly. I have also the operating income forecast where I can use this slider to get more detail or to differ the scope of what I'm looking at. On the bottom, I have a heat map which compares markets by product for my actuals where I can see that the athletic shirts products in my primary market today have the highest actual numbers. Given my actuals are available until June, I need to drag the slider before June to make it affect the actual numbers, as you can see over here. My name is Ivor van der Zand. I'm the global analytics pre-sales leader and also the global Leonardo pre-sales leader for SAP. On the second page, we see the strategic five year plan which can be used to model multi-year strategic planning insights. You see the value driver tree where I can play with where I want to focus on this tree. And there is a table on the right hand, uh, right hand side over here that I can use to play with the drivers I want to simulate with. On the top right bottom, you find my forecast displayed in a bar chart. Let's show how this page works and how you can use the various drivers to see the impact generated by this value driver tree. Let's first adjust one of the emerging market growth percentages that you see over here. I click on one of the metrics and I decide to improve this market with, for example, 5%. I click OK. I also decide to improve the measures for the emerging market growth for the other years. I also decide to start working and simulating with my plan drivers. Let's have a look at the year-over-year -year personal cost for 2018 at 2% currently by clicking. I'm now going to copy this number over the various cell by simply dragging and dropping. <clears throat> and now all my years have an increased personal cost year over year of 2.75%. Let's go back to the value driver tree and look at some more functionality. I open the simulation panel and I now ask Analytics Cloud to run my calculations based on the various changes I've made. I click run calculation. You can now see that all my notes have been changed. You see the impact in the yellow highlighted numbers over here, all the way back to my 
top profitability line. So I've made a perfect simulation. What would have been the impact if I changed the metrics like I did? As you can see, also my accompanying chart over here with my operating profit forecast has been adjusted based upon the changes I made. Let's have a look at the market organization tab. Here I can see the entity structure of my organizations as organized into primary and emergent markets. I'm going to drill into emergent markets by clicking the icon. And over here you can see all the different countries. As you can see, the operations in Brazil have grown quite a bit. So I'm going to decide to change and move Brazil from an emerging sector to the primary sector. I can do that by clicking the model wizard. This gives me insight in the chart of accounts as defined in my planning model. You see it on the top left hand side. On the top right hand side, you see the various product groups, but we are at this moment very interested in the entity structure where you can see if I scroll down that Brazil over here is part of the emerging market. I just click it and drag it up over here to make it part of the primary markets. I click OK. And the model is now being recalculated. As you can see, if I open up primary market, you can see Brazil has disappeared here. If I open up primary market, you see that Brazil is now part of the primary structure as I requested for. Let's have a look at our sales tab over here with all my sales numbers. As you can see, I can select the product groups that I'm interested in. And I'm going to select all product groups. The numbers automatically adjust. Let's have a look at the volume number for quarter four. I'm going to click the cell, as you can see, highlighted. Let's now generate a forecast by clicking the forecast button. I click forecast. And as you can see, I can now create a predictive forecast. And I can choose the level and the grain to forecast the pump. I'm going to choose month and I'm going to preview my forecast for you. The forecast is now being generated and it will shortly come up with my new predictive forecast. Here's my screen and I can perfectly see my predictive forecast indicated in this screen where I even have the choice between using the existing weighting for overwritten values or use a specific reference uh, period for that. I just click OK right now. And my predictive forecast is now being embedded into this version of the model. The volume of the units is multiplied by the average selling price to yield gross sales. Let's have a look at the discounts for quarter four. The number 478 million. Since the prediction increased volume uh, and thus the gross sales for quarter four, I'm going to increase the discounts to 615 million for quarter four. So just by typing 650 million and okaying that. You see that now also my discounts are being distributed over the variance month as part of quarter four. I also see the effect for the whole year. At the bottom, you see everything also being visualized in my time series chart over here with my new numbers. I select one of the products over here, for example, running shoes. We are having a look right now at the <clears throat> next page, the cost analysis page. I want to have a look at the cost of sales for quarter four and I click it. Let's scroll a bit to the right so we have more details for the uh, details for the various month. I need to increase this cost of goods sold metric to go along with the increase uh, and the uh, based upon the time series predictions we made in the gross revenue in the previous step. I'm going to increase this number to four billion.
as you can see, my metrics are now again disaggregated over the various months. And you can also see that I brought my margin back in line with the other quarters. As you can also see on the bottom, my various graphs have been adjusted accordingly. I'm now going to have a look at how my allocations are done by clicking the allocation button at the top of the page. And I'm, uh, I can choose between spreading, distribution, assigning, and even executing the allocation. I'm going to use spreading over here and click spreading where you can see I come into a, a dialog box where I can choose the weighting and even the preview of the spreading over the various quarters. I can choose in this time the target dimension time and I have a drill down box over here with more details. For example, I can choose how to spread, uh, how to auto fill the pattern. I'm going to choose even over here, but I have other options too. Let's choose even and I can now apply my spread. The model is now being recalculated and the spreading is done accordingly as you can see on the screen. The new metrics show now how I can see the cost of goods sold were spread evenly over, over the fourth quarter. Analytics Cloud disaggregated the monthly amounts for cost of goods sold across the accounts and product dimensions. In the page selector, I'm now having a look at my detailed allocations by clicking the Allocations tab. Over here, you see my allocations in detail. Below, I have two graphs with the operating income per product group and also the operating income for the uh, entity structure by product group. Let's have a focus on the first table where you see where a number of elements are still unassigned and I'd like to assign them to products. Let me show you how that works. I go to my <clears throat> home button and I browse my processes and I go to the allocations processes over here by clicking that. I open up my planning review. And over here you see the various steps I can take. I can pick up IT expenses and choose to edit a step of allocation. So over here you see the um, <clears throat> edit step uh, dialog box with detailed options as shown below. And I'm now selecting the filter for my chart of accounts. I'm going to scroll down to my operation expenses. And we'll open up that area for more detail. I'm going to select information technology expensive and OK that so that my filter is now applicable. Which brings me to this step over here where you can see my, um, my allocation line. And I'm going to click the pencil over here to actually define my allocations. What you see on the screen is a uh, dialog box for defining the allocation rules with the sources of information, the target of information, and the drivers of information. The drivers of information allow me to in detail define the way I want my various rules to be allocated. The driver that I'm going to use is the PO numbers and the target are the various product groups as here. I'm going to choose to execute the allocations. As you can see over here, I can choose in which version I'd like to do that. And I'm going to use version one of my forecast. Now I can choose what the scope is of my allocation. So I can either refine my filters or take my filters out, but I'm going to choose them, the ones I set, and I use point of view. The allocation is now actually being executed. And this is my final result where you see that everybody is, uh, everything uh, is now assigned at least to the products using my PO driver. 
In the properties of my table, I can set the drill state, set over here. And I'm going to choose product group. And I'm going to choose a product level till four, so that I can get a full overview. I'm going to set that. So you can see, I now have a few cascaded overview of all my products where I now allocate, allocated the different uh, elements towards. No assigned groups anymore. Everything is set to zero. So I've done my cost allocation accordingly with the two uh, adjusted metrics over here in B.